Hello and welcome back to another edition of What's Moving in the Forex Market brought to you by myself, Kurt Capra, and Pristine Trading. Please keep in mind that all comments are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. And as always, make sure you're checking out pristine.com for a full schedule of webinars. This week we have a couple for you, uh, starting with Monday, February 1st at 415 learn how you can squeeze more profit from smaller moves along with uh, another one at 515 becoming a versatile trader and why it's no longer an option and then we have a very special webinar on thursday february 4th a fireside chat with president and ceo of pristine greg capper so you know again hopefully you can join us for any one of these that we've got upcoming or as i said check out www.pristine.com for our full schedule and listing of upcoming webinars taking a look at the forex market we're looking in the upper left here at euro us dollar and it continues to be range bound as you can see here it's just going sideways. The moving averages are intersecting and overlapping price, which is a real good indication that nothing exciting from a trend point of view is taking place. So the best thing you can do here with regard to Euro US dollar is look to play the range on an intraday basis. But until we get some kind of breakout or breakdown, there really is no strong directional bias here. Uh, to the extent that we can develop a directional bias we would have to refer to the weekly which as you can see is in a downtrend here and so we'll see if we do get some follow through lower but at this point you know based on the weekly i tend to lean a little more bearishly but at the same time this daily just going sideways has me uh, playing the range if if anything Moving on over to Aussie dollar, US dollar, you can see this one also trying to retrace a little bit. And as we discussed in last week's video, we have moved into a little bit of resistance. So uh, you could see the reaction, the initial reaction to that. But at the same time, now being above these moving averages, there is some newfound demand that's been coming in as well. So another scenario another environment where things are kind of confused and and not real sure which way they want to go overall weekly time frames are weak they're bearish so you want to kind of default to that overall but at the same time you're going to play the intraday trends so no real strong uh, swing bias here really again just looking to play the intraday volatility and the same thing with New Zealand dollar, U.S. dollar here in the upper right. You can see this one's just been going sideways here in a rather tight consolidation. Um, but until it can break out or break down, we're really not going to get any compelling type of movement either way. So you know, you, you, if you can find some unique opportunity, some clean opportunity, you could look to take advantage of that. But really, there there isn't a whole lot being offered to us at this moment. That being said... If we can break out or break down, I definitely see that changing. So it, it is a pair that we want to pay close attention to. In the bottom right, we've got US dollar yen. And as you can see, we had this explosive move higher when Bank of Japan came out announcing negative interest rates. And so that certainly spiked the dollar higher against the yen. And you can see the resulting action of that very strong candle into resistance. Um, and at this point, we'll see. I mean, this this could be setting up for follow through this week, right? getting this attempt to move lower, starting the week off. If it can come back up, if buyers recover this here and we ultimately begin to break over these highs, we could be looking at a move back up towards the 123.67 ish area. So there is still some upside potential here, as, as we'll see if we get follow through to Friday's wide range candle. If not, if it doesn't hold, well, believe it or not, we could completely collapse here and fall all the way back down. So that's that's going to be something to watch for, keying on those intraday levels of support to see if, if they can hold. If not, like I said, down will go. Moving on over to U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar. This one, as we discussed last week, has pulled back here finally given the... Uh, 
the relief rally in oil and it is now into support so you can see these buyers stepping up but at the same time we do have some overhead resistance so it could be a period of a bit more volatility some some more wild swings taking place you're, you're not going to see the same kind of trending action that you were seeing in the weeks leading up to this recent pullback so still look for buyers to step up at support but at the same time look for sellers to get a little more aggressive at resistance and uh, play play the range right play in the middle of the range take what you can get and and move on don't get married to any any bias and finally pound us dollar here as we discussed has fallen quite a bit and really just going sideways here now if it can break out maybe it gets a little bit more demand but i would have to believe that given the weekly chart given this daily trend uh, any attempt to move up to higher levels of resistance is going to get sold into so uh, if it does break out like i said you could look to play that intraday strength but at the same time as you start seeing momentum slowing and supply increasing that would be the signal to look at reversing and getting short for what could be a, a much more substantial move lower so that is where things are at as we head into this new week first week of february so um, as always stay patient stay disciplined and stay confident we'll see you in the next video and as always make sure to comment like and subscribe so that you can continue to receive future updates on any videos that we release until next time take care and we'll talk to you again soon